I remember um, several years ago um, walking out of the School of Nursing. There wasn't university in that day. And, you know, full of enthusiasm about the patient care and holistic approach, etc. And after my first shift as a staff nurse in a, a busy acute medical ward, um, I have to say my dreams were shattered about holistic care. And I know many of us strive to deliver holistic care, but, you know, sometimes it is impossible. Um, but I'm going to kind of speak to you about what it means, what it's meant to be, and, and maybe how we can do it. So what is holistic care? Well, it's, it's considering the person, not the disease, and the whole person. And these are, these are just a couple of um, quotes. So it's considering the complete person, physically, psychologically, socially, spiritually. And as I say, treating the person, not the disease. And it's not, it's not a new concept. It's been around since the, the good old days of Florence Nightingale. And way back then, she was really a, a pioneer in terms of the link between um, the patient and the, the environment that that patient lived in. And I know that obviously things have changed since the days of Florence Nightingale, but one thing that hasn't changed is the presence of illness and the effect that it has on people. And that's never going to change. And none of us are immune to that. Not the mightiest person, the best paid person in the world is not immune to disease or illness. And we really need to, to consider that. And in terms of MS, MS affects every part of someone's life. Not just them, but their partners, their families, their children. So it's really <laughs> imperative that we try and practice holistic care if we're really going to manage the needs of a person with MS. How can we do holistic assessments? So we'll just run through some of the things um, that I think are important. Involving the patient in their own decisions. There's been many patients that I've nursed over the years, you know, who I maybe haven't agreed with the, the path that they have been on or the path that they have chosen. You know, but we are not there to judge or to make, you know, our, our opinion isn't always right for that patient. And no matter what that patient decides, whether you agree or disagree, your job is to be supportive um, and to, to, to support them regardless to whatever they decide. So I think it's really important that the patient is part of that decision. This is not about you or your life, it's about them. It's about being patient-centred. And we need to try and focus on self-care. I mean, one of the biggest things in MS is educating the patient in diagnosis. Not just in MS, I think in any condition, if a person has education and they have the tools, then they will deal and manage that condition better. And it's all about, you know, letting the patient take control. We don't have control of that patient. We have no right. We might see them for 10 minutes, once every six months or once a year. So why do we think that we have the right to tell them what they should do and what they shouldn't do in terms of their care or their health condition. A team approach. I have always, always believed that, you know, a person with MS, as an MS nurse, I cannot deliver everything that that patient needs. I'm just a link in the chain. And we have to, there's a lot of egos involved sometimes as well, and we have to go over that. We all have to work together, be it a charity, be it voluntary, be it NHS, whatever. We're all there doing the same job to help the patient. And that's the only way it can work. It's a team approach. It's a, it's a big chain. And I think the, and the patient is certainly part of that chain as well. And I've always felt that even now there's, there's certainly even a wee bit of um, snobbery in terms of non-NHS. And I think we have to rise above that because, you know, there's lots of support out there for patients and we should be directing them to that support if it, if it, because we can't give them everything that they need. We also have to focus not just on the illness, so not just in the MS. That person with MS is still the same person they were before that condition. And we have to try and you know, we don't want them to live a life of MS. We want them to live a normal life, 
managing their MS. Um, and we have to get out and, and teach them things like lifestyle and diet and exercise and living well, continuing to do the things that make them who they are. These are all really important in terms of, you know, self-centered uh, care. And in the sort of multicultural world that we live in, live in, we have to take into consideration people's beliefs and, and, and be respectful of that. Every person is unique. Now, in MS, obviously, you, you know, you might see 50 patients a week. They might have similar symptoms. Um, and I think you, you sometimes you can get a wee bit blasé about things. What we have to remember is if it, we're all unique. Every, every, pa every path that you travel in life is unique to you. Your experience of pain, your experience of a symptom is completely different to the next person's. And we have to be mindful of that. We also have to consider the story behind the story. How many patients come in and you say to them, uh, how are you today? Oh yeah, I'm fine. But their body language and their face tells you some, something completely different. Now, you know, as a nurse, that's my job to look behind that and beyond that. Not just treat the symptom. You know, you have to look much further. And being open-minded. I mean, some of the things that the patients over the years have tried, you know, it's blown me away, but it's being mindful that there are other approaches, whether you agree, whether you disagree, whether you believe or not believe. If that patient wants to try that, then, you know, be mindful, open-minded, that we can work in conjunction, you know, things like acupuncture is, is really helpful, uh, maybe aromatherapy, they can work in conjunction with the conventional medicines that we give them too. So it's just being open-minded and not sort of being judgmental if the patient wants to try something that you maybe don't necessarily agree with. So what's the barriers to us delivering holistic care? And I'm sure nurses in the room have often, have often asked this question. High caseload, you know, all of us, you know, most MS nurses are, are dealing with uh, unsustainable caseloads, not just MS nurses. Every nurse, community nurse, health visitors, we're all, we're all battling. Time constraints. I certainly know when I worked um, in another area quite recently, my role as MS nurse changed very dramatically from being an MS nurse who did try and look at the whole person to being very disease-modifying therapy focused. And I used deliberate tactics to avoid conversation because I knew I had 20 patients in the waiting room and I needed to do their bloods and get through the, the, the waiting list. So, you know, I was deliberately avoiding certain questions because I didn't want the big answers. So time constraints, is, is, and it's always easier to deal with the physical, the here and now, and, and don't worry about anything else. Task, resources, geographical area, you know, what services are available. Sometimes you would like to refer patients on or, or, or refer patients to another service, but th they might not be available in, in that area. So that can be a barrier. And also task orientated. If, if, you know, as I say, if you're in clinic and it's just bloods that you're doing, you're not thinking about anything else. Um, and a lot of patients, I'm thinking about a, a patient recently who came to see me and uh, a young mum in her early 30s and she had tried to take her own life and I said you know so we were talking about a lot of talk about you know why she felt that way what led her to it and she said I felt it was a burden because when I went to the hospital the nurse was always too busy and I, I didn't feel I could ask questions but I've been really frightened about the future and about what's going to happen to me who's going to look after my kids and my husband and then when I was at home, I couldn't do the things I wanted to do with the kids. I couldn't have a physical relationship with my husband. I was always too tired. Um, and then at work, I wasn't able to keep up with my colleagues at work. She worked in a care home. So she said she felt I, I, just, I was a burden to everyone. And she felt that she would be better off uh, not here. So although we think as nurses, you know, and we've got a task to do, Think about how the patient feels when we're rushing through, not giving them the time, not giving them the time to talk, not giving them the time to question, um, because we're so task-orientated and so caring about the here and now. 
and we need to consider, you know, how the patient feels um, when, when we behave like that. So, holistic care in MS, and I've put a question mark, because I think <laughs> in years gone by, maybe, yeah, we did strive to, to offer holistic care, but I think the reality is we probably don't. And, and I can say that as an MS nurse, because when I started as an MS nurse, we had one treatment interferon, and you did have time. You'd had time to spend with patients in clinic and talk about their family and their past lives and their jobs and everything else. But because there's so many different treatments nowadays, um, you, the nurse's role, as I say, has changed. So it's became very disease-modifying therapy focused. And it, it's a wee bit of an inequality in the service in terms of if you've got a patient with relapsing remitting or a patient with progressive disease. Patient with the relapsing remitting is seen regularly on treatment and seen a neurologist, an MS nurse, etc. But the person maybe with the progressive disease never gets seen at all. Um, so in terms of holistic care in MS, I don't really think it happens. And you know, I'm not saying that I'm not saying that MS nurses don't want to deliver holistic care. But I think the problem is that the, 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 the treatments have got better and better and there's more treatments to see now. There's over 12 treatments as opposed to one. So that's disproportionate to the amount of MS nurses in the services and that's, that's, a, big, that's a big problem. And I, I don't think we meet the needs of the more complex patients in the community, probably a lot of the patients that you guys look after um, with lots of complex needs. Um, maybe end of life, palliative. These are the patients that we're not seeing. And as an MS specialist nurse, I don't feel good about that. Um, and, and recently, um, I've moved from the NHS to a job out with the NHS. And it's actually been quite a good learning curve because in some ways it has taken me back to the role when I walked out of the School of Nursing that I thought I was going to be. So uh, in some ways it's kind of taken me back to to nearly been able to, to practice um, holistic care. And I really just want to sort of end on saying, for me, it's not really, it's not really important how much time you've got with a patient. For me, it's important what you do in that time, how you interact in that time. That should be what matters. Thank you.